Hey everyone, S Dub Nation here, and welcome back to a brand new Marvel ranking here on the channel. I'd like to stop and take the time to rank all nine WandaVision episodes, ranked from the worst to the best. Please know that everything that I will say in this video is just my very own opinion. My list is certainly not the right list, it is just my list. And you're free to comment down below your ranking of all nine WandaVision episodes, ranked from the worst to the best, just like me, or you could just do your favor. Also, please note that I do have a Twitter. You guys can check out my thoughts on the WandaVision episodes over there. Also, check out the regular podcast where I do full analysis thoughts over there on the regular podcast. That link is down in the description always. And also, please note that I love all of the episodes on this. Like, like I had a blast with this entire season. I love the season. You guys should check out that review up above. But without further ado, let's just get right into our ranking. Kicking off my list at number 9 has got to go to episode 2, Don't Touch That Dial. Now, I found this episode to be more sitcom than actually moving the story forward. We get a hijinks and a couple of mysteries with some new characters like Monica Rambeau being introduced and Dottie. And we also get like that cool little cult thing for the children. Also, we get that funny little sequence at the talent show with Vision being gummed up. It was just so fun and so hilarious. But other than that, this episode kind of feels like set up for later episodes while still serving as just a standard sitcom. Coming in at number 8 for me has got to go to episode 7, Breaking the Fourth Wall. I found this episode to be not that good. It wasn't bad it, because we got some great reveals with Monica and Vision. But I did say on the regular podcast, this is the episode that I walked away the most pissed from. The Agatha song, though it was fire, like I liked it. Just them confirming Agatha was Agnes and then the song trying to make it like such a, a big surprise didn't sit well with me. Like, we all knew it had to be Agatha because they made it too on the nose. The brooch, the witch costume, they made it too obvious. And for a second, you believed that that wasn't actually Agatha. The Wanda stuff was actually pretty interesting to me, so I liked that. And Vision and Darcy were a nice pair with some great exposition to him, explaining how he died, explaining his story with, with Wanda and the Avengers and all that. I also love the mockumentary style because I like mockumentaries, they're kind of funny. But in some cases, it wasn't as funny as they tried to make it seem. But none of that had me more heated than when we found out that Agnes was actually Agatha. I'm fine with it now, but when I first watched it, I was so heated. And I also thought she killed the kids. I was for sure she killed the kids. Coming in at number 7 for me has got to go to episode 1, film before a live studio audience. As this is our first MCU content in a year, obviously I'm going to be a little biased, but I really loved this episode from the start. It was fresh, it was fun, and it was great to finally see these characters again, as well as the MCU, especially on Disney+. Plus. It was a very cliche sitcom episode about, you know... Vision and Wanda forgetting what the date was on the calendar and then them not knowing their anniversary and then Vision's calling Wanda about I think it's best if I impress the wife and then she says well I think it's best if I impress the husband so she thinks that Vision is talking about the holiday but he's actually talking about the hearts coming over for dinner I just liked all of that stuff it was very cliche but I still liked it but how it shines is once we actually look at how the episode starts because we all remember where these characters left off at with Wanda basically being broken after Endgame and Vision being dead after Infinity War. The mystery and the horror of it all just kicks in and I personally thought if you wanted to go weird to start off this show as well as Phase 4, this was how you do it. Coming in at number 6 for me has got to go to Episode 9, the series finale. This finale was a little underwhelming to me. Going into the episode, a lot of my theories were correct, but I wasn't expecting what I got. That's both a good thing and a bad thing. But I thought the Scarlet Witch emerging in the scroll post credit scene was actually pretty great and it got me a little bit hype. I thought Agatha was way better as Agnes though as like the mystery because her as a villain was a little bit mad to me. White Vision is obviously going to be used later for the MCU so I can't wait to see him again. And I really did love the scene where Wanda had to say goodbye to Vision again. The Ralph reveal was okay for me. I know a lot of people are triggered about that. But some characters felt like they had nothing to do inside of this episode. But that doesn't matter because all that mattered was Wanda's descent and the relationship between Wanda and Vision. And I think they did a great job. Honestly, I can't wait to see how this story of the Scarlet Witch expands into Doctor Strange 2. 
All right, real quick before I get into my top five list, I like to take the time to say that if you are a fan of Marvel, which you probably are, that's why you're watching this video. Click that playlist up above everything Marvel related that I have on my channel. Also, if you are a big fan of WandaVision, you guys can go over there to the regular podcast. That link is always in the description where I do have full analysis thoughts on every WandaVision episodes. Me and my friend Jonathan, we do WandaVision reviews every week. They premiere on Mondays. Like, comment, and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get into my top five. Kick it off my top five list has got to go to episode three now in color. This episode was the first time that I actually really felt fear in the MCU. In every other MCU project, I've never felt fear for the characters. I always knew that they were going to get out alive. But for this, even though I knew Monica was going to get out alive, I felt fear for Monica. I was literally shaking while seeing Wanda just snap. Starting off, it felt like another episode two to me. It was very sitcom-y. But it quickly turned from sitcom to horror show as we see Wanda just lose it on Monica. I found myself actually in tears. Literally, I was pouring tears just from Wanda name dropping Pietro and from Monica talking about the Ultron incident. This episode worked as progressing the story forward. But the beginning, even though I enjoyed the pregnancy stuff, all the sitcom stuff, the pregnancy stuff with her water breaking and everything like that. And, you know, I even enjoyed the part where she just like quick edit inside of her own show. And also with the stork not responding to her powers. There are a lot of mysteries in this. It still felt very much like episode two. But I did love the end. I love the twins coming in there and everything else about the episode I thought was pretty good. For a long time, this was actually my favorite episode. Coming in at number four for me has got to go to episode five on a very special episode. I guess the Evan Peters reveal inside of this episode was the big cameo that Elizabeth Olsen was talking about. And to that, I just didn't think that it was that big. When he appeared, I was like, oh, cool. But after that, I found Wanda coming out of the hex threatening sword and Hayward and also the argument between Vision and Wanda and Vision finding out that okay Wanda is actually messing up things Wanda's threatening Vision now everything going on with the Hex stuff that that interests me the sword stuff that interests me and let's not forget the Monica Darcy and Wu trio the Evan Peters reveal wasn't a big thing to me and a lot of people blew that out of proportion because the Evan Peters reveal to me wasn't the biggest thing inside of this episode Especially when I knew mutants and X-Men were not coming inside of this series. Kick it off my top three list has got to go to episode six, all new Halloween spooktacular. The Halloween episode was the one that I was looking forward to the most. The way that we see the characters in their comic accurate costumes, Wanda, Vision, Pietro, even the kids, and the kids getting their powers. And let's not forget that spooky commercial with the Yo Magic that kind of gave us a little bit of confirmation that... Somebody's actually trying to feed off of Wanda's magic. This episode is the most enjoyable one to me. And this was the episode that confirmed that Vision can't exist outside of the Hex, which I did predict. And that Evan Peters is not Wanda's brother or the X-Men Quicksilver, that I did predict as well. For anyone doubting that it wasn't, it was all Wanda because she just straight up expanded the Hex with no effort. Vision's subplot was way more interesting because we actually see the limits of how far Wanda's powers go as we see people on the outskirts affected but frozen and pain which shows Wanda in an all new light not gonna lie I did jump a little bit when I saw zombie Pietro but I mean he was fishing for information my runner up at number two has got to go to episode four we interrupt this program this episode was great because it was a departure from the sitcoms though I love the sitcom stuff which was all set up for episode four it still felt very good to get back to MCU form especially with the quality of this episode feeling like an MCU film Darcy actually does something and I really did love Darcy inside of this series and this episode made me hype once I saw Wu do the card trick from Ant-Man 2 that he's been practicing for five years now and also the undusting scene in the beginning of the episode and I was like this episode is gonna be good just from seeing Monica be undusted this episode is strictly exposition but works so well to get us caught up in the world outside of the hex but coming in at my number one has got to go to episode eight previously on. The best thing about this episode is also the most depressing thing about the series. We actually see how much trauma and pain Wanda has endured in her life up to this point. I mean, we've all known what happened to Pietro and Wanda throughout the entire MCU since their appearance, but we never actually got to see it. 
The writers, the directors, the showrunner, Kevin Feige and his team at Marvel, they know how to tell a great story. And I'm glad that inside of this episode, they threw away all the powers and magic and sitcoms and CGI big scale elements and told an amazing story about a young woman with extraordinary abilities that created a world where she can live out the fantasy she always wanted because of her grief and her tragedies. Elizabeth Olsen is amazing as Wanda and her scene where she just looks at the letter that Vision left her and she just breaks down in the land and it doesn't matter if you're stone cold if you never had any emotions if you never cried you felt something seeing Wanda release all of her pain and trauma to create something that would affect the people in Westview. This episode showed me that Marvel can go over 8 episodes and over 5 hours worth of content and not have any action scenes that defines their content. Like, if you go to Avengers Infinity War, what do you remember? The Titan battle. You go to Avengers Endgame, what do you remember? The final battle. The entire show did not rely on an action scene. Instead, it relied on scenes like Vision and Wanda watching TV where one of the greatest quotes happened. What is grief if not love persevering? Or let's talk about how we see Wanda crying over a dismantled robot saying, I can't feel you. And it was able to land and pack such an emotional punch. Every emotional beat in this episode hit. And although I didn't really like the Salem scene at the beginning, especially now with Agatha not being that great. This turned out to be the best episode to me and one of the most emotional MCU projects. This is why it has to come in at number one. All right, guys, that was it for the ranking. Please know that everything that I did say in this video was just my very own opinion. My list was certainly not the right list. It was just my list. And you are free to comment down below your ranking of all nine WandaVision episodes ranked from the worst to the best just like me or you could just do your favorite. Please don't forget to check out that Twitter that's going to pop up on your screen right now. Please don't forget to check out that review for WandaVision episode nine. And please don't forget to check out that link in the description for all the Wanda division reviews on the regular podcast like comment and subscribe guys and i will see you all next time peace